There's no Sunday we have not had something else to do after church. But a very big one coming today. Glory to Jesus forever. Amen. All right. God is about to shoot someone here. Open up your heart to receive. This is the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord. Open your heart to receive this morning. Uh, scripture for the month. Oh, sorry. Apologies. You know, we had a thunder strike on, uh, on Wednesday that actually affected a lot of our equipment and all of that. So we got a new TV, got some new new things and all of that. And this, this, we got a new TV. Got, so we discovered that. Thank you for clapping. Thank you. And then we didn't call any of us on phone. Amen. And then glory to God. There was no pressure anywhere. We got some new charges and all of that. And then, so we, we thought that the split out was not bad. It was just a cable. So it was in the middle of the night we discovered that it was, it was a split out. The, the split out was completely gone. So we did a change of split out. So in case the TV in front of you is not displaying, it's not because the TV is bad. It's just because what we display with the split out that was split to those TVs are not available. Are we together now? So the splitter that was split to those, the splitter that was split to those TV is what God brought also on Wednesday, but we didn't know until late last night. Until late last night. I went out very early this morning to meet some persons. We started making calls around 12 a, around 2 a.m. to see if we can get a splitter for service. But we couldn't get any. So, so apologies for that. Between and next, between and Wednesday, the splitter will be in. Another speaker will have come so that we have the best of service. But that notwithstanding, this is why important you come to church with your Bible. So we are going to be doing a bit of our Bible on our, on our phone, on our, uh, maybe your Bible as the case might be. So Third John 2 is our scripture for the month. Third John 2 is our scripture for the month. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Say thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm mean, not excited to be in church today. Say thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, third John, third John, and verse two. Third John two. He said, "I wish above all things that I may prosper." He said, "I'm being in health, even as I so am." I love the King James version. He said, "Beloved," he said, "Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things." And being in health, even as I so prosper it, is a month of flourishing air to where nobody here. I told you last Sunday that everyone sick will be healed, not just you will be healed. You could hear that testimony as I came into church. There is an anointing. The Bible says they that appear in Zion before God, they go from strength to strength. So in the place, in the in the, in, in the place where we call Zion, where God dwells, God is everywhere. But God chose to actually host his presence in a place called Zion. He said, Upon Mount Zion, there's shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness and the people of God shall possess their possession. So, and the house of God is a house of healing. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be holiness. So, when we're coming to a tabernacle such as this, built on the Christ, whatever it is that is actually an infirmity, sickness in our life will be healed. You see, even that right there where you are seated, I can guarantee you there is a moving in your spirit that everything that is not of God shall be rooted out. Because the word said, whatever my father has not planned Shall be rooted up. He said, The stranger shall hear my voice, and they will not remain there, but they will they will run out, out of their Eden places. There is a dimension of fire that reflects whatever it is that is not of God in your body. When that fire comes, it exposes. One of the things that the fire of God is that it exposes that which is not of God. The Bible's only Marhakoski Runta Handelia Garata Yade. Your ascents in the realm of the spirit, Ikara. Whatever it is that is covering that which belongs to you, there is a fire coming today that is about to expose that idea that you need to move forward and you won't become a victim of what it is that is happening in this season, even in this country, and what is happening in the world right now. You won't be consumed by any of those evil. Let your hymn be loud and glad. So I wish above all things that that may prosper and be in the health. Even as I so prosper it, it's a month of flourishing earth where your health will flourish where everything that concerns your health will flourish. You not only just be healed, you walk in health. You not only walk in health, you grow to a perspective where you be carrying the healing anointing. That anywhere you find yourself, anyone sick, Amari has it. Jesus never needed a public to manifest power. When the Son of God, I may not remember that concept of activate that we had last Sunday. So you need to 
activate the power of God in you unto him is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we can ever ask or think according to the power that working in there is a dimension of the power of God in you in John chapter 1 and verse 12 the Bible said as many as received him to them he gave power to become sons of God by the reason of sonship to God you carry a dimension of his power and unto him is able to do exceeding and abundantly above what can ever ask or working according to the power that working in us that power needs to be activated because many are working in ignorance you are not as only as you think that's why the Bible says I say ye are gods but you shall die like mere men why because they know not neither did they understand when we work in ignorance of the things that is available to us we become casualty of the things where the people of the world become casualty from but that is not your portion because the yoke of ignorance is broken you are activating that power of God on your inside in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ let me tell you this the world we live in is a world of power and this is why you are not you are not supposed to be casual and ordinary. Emo, you don't really need to do anything evil before you are attacked. Many good people are victim of evil. They, you have asked this question before. How come this person is upright and pious and yet they become victim of untimely death and they become victim of poverty and like one demon is sitting over their destiny. That you are good does not mean the devil will not come. That you are even good even attract the devil to come actually and test if you are too legal. Remember Job was pious but Satan came. Can I tell you something? you don't only have to be good but you need to grow into a realm where you carry the dimension of the power of God you need to activate that power of God on your inside where you'll be able to put things in perspective one thing power does is that you put things in perspective power put things in perspective power put things in perspective nobody dare tell you when you are passing the house of a general in the army that you should not speed more than a particular speed. Because you know the soldier there can arrange you and make you sit on the floor. Common sense advises you. In the territory of a lion, the goat don't play around. Even dog, goat, dog won't come near. Why? Because the territory of power. It's a territory of power. The Bible speaking in Psalm 63, remember we studied that scripture. And verse 16, verse 3, he said, he said, say unto God how terrible are thy works. He said, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Enemy does not submit to phonetic, they submit to power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Psalm 110 and verse 1, he said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand, shall make the enemy thy first two. Verse 2. He said, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. He said, rule thou in the midst. You can't take dominion when the rod of your strength is not released, which is the power from Zion. We are too ordinary. I told you last Sunday, very painful as it is, if you are broke and you lack the power of God, the devil got you. Yeah. Yeah. Ability to walk is to generate them. Ah, I'm going to teach about that tonight. In that meeting, I'm going to. Ability to be able to work and generate money is a level. Ability to be able to command what you want is another level. Yeah. You can follow principle and get what you want. But there is a realm of brokenness in the realm of intimacy that things are compared to look for you. That by the justice system of God, you have grown above that realm. You need the power of God. You need an encounter with the spirit to be able to rule in this dark world. In verse 3 of Psalm 110, verse 3 he said, He said, Thy people shall be willing in the days of thy power. Thy people shall be said from the beauty of holiness, said, That is the deal of thy youth. You, have your, you walk into your inheritance when the power of God is there. Either evil will happen to you, say, Not me. There are things you don't pray for. Why? Because you carry the power of God on your inside. You can't be sick. You can't. You can't. I've never had when Jesus was sick. So you can't be. As he is, so we are. So we are. So let's deal into dimension of power. Wealth of power. Let's talk about the wealth of power. There are seven wealths of power. power. Wealth simply means treasure. Spring. Are you understand what I'm saying? Treasures. We can call it realms. We can call it realms. We can call it treasure. We can call it spring, a source, a fountain. So we're talking about the fountains of power. There are seven fountains. There are seven wells of power. Number one is actually power to cast out demons. That's the lowest realm. And this is where many preachers are stopped. This is where many believers are deceived. That when a person can actually cast out demon, you think he's powerful. That's the primary school. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 1, in Luke chapter 9, oh, the screen is not working. But I'm going to be very fast. In Luke chapter, I'm really used to this, amen? Alright, but let's, I'll, I'll use my Bible. 
in Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. Verse 1. The Bible said, and then he called the twelve. He called the twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Is that written in your Bible? Now, you remember that the disciples that they called in this place were not men of statues. They were just men who believe and follow Christ. Because you believe and you are following Christ, you are coming to a dimension you will be able to cast out. You see, the power over demonic realm is actually the least power in this kingdom. Why? Because that power is actually a function of the revelation of the finished work of the Christ. So the moment you believe Jesus, and then you believe the power of his resurrection, you move into the understanding and the consciousness of the finished work of Christ. No demon can resist you when you understand the finished work of Christ. Demons have sense, and they know that this thing actually negotiates by power. They know before they can possess any man, they need to actually subdue a realm of power in the person. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you are so ignorant of what you carry. And that's why the demon can come and possess you. You say, I have cancer. No, for where? You know what? Arras kipo atamande hata. It's actually a system of do you know that cancer was created in a lab? Do you know a bola was actually created in a lab? Do you, do you know how many people have died of that wickedness? And this is why the people who actually man some realms in, of this art are, are wicked men, are devilish men, and this is why the children of God and the child of God should not... Can I tell you something? Have you noticed that most billionaires are buying up farmland right now? They are buying up crops, not because they love farming. It's simply because they want to actually come up with a system where they can control the food chain. You see, many of us don't read. This is the painful aspect of life. Many believers are so dumb and dead, we don't actually read what concerns us. We live our lives so casually and become victims of circumstance. Hey, ask now, go. How foolish. How foolish. How foolish. What has that had dead to you in any way? Billionaires are buying off all manner of farmland right now. You know what? So that they can, can control food chain. Food chain. You know what? So that many people can go hungry. If you will not actually bow to their condition, you will bow to their God before they feed you. You don't know that is happening now? And believers are there watching. Why? We are powerless people. We can actually bring about a dimension of authority to be able to stop the hands of the devil. Corona was actually created in the lab by wicked men, demons and devils working to proclaim an agenda. This is why the children of God needs to come into, the, to come into that reality of the kingdom of God to bring about a dynamic change. In this room. God will not come down to effect a change. God will pass through you and I to effect a change. When men are careless and not expensive not to bring, to bring God to a situation, a generation will suffer. When the father or the mother of the house is not responsible, the children become vagabond. So when we are irresponsible as believers, we actually usher in a dimension of pain into a generation. Could there be a prophet in the land who could say all the people that actually source cancer to this world, you are cleared of and you die. I said it here jokingly one day when in the last government, I said it here jokingly, when I saw the blood and all of the things that was happening in the, in the northern part of the region, I said, can God just empower me just enough that I was standing in one place and I said, anyone in the government that is part of this killing begin to die now. Not only, the, and maybe there are a few senators who are actually inside those nonsense and yet they are doing, they are doing their sending meeting right there and seven person fall down right there and die. And I said right here, I said, I just caused the people who are actually going in a bath to keep people sponsoring those people, some of them just die. They say there's one president in one nation that is actually, I said that president is dead right now. Before like key 300 people, there'll be, there'll be nothing again remaining. Oh, you see that as wickedness? Don't be a fool. Don't you see the blood that is flowing? This is why the children of God needs to come into a dimension where we we'll exercise our authority yell on heart. Where we'll be able to bring the power of God. You see, you can legislate you can legislate the government of the kingdom of the monarch of Zion without the power of God. You can do that. You can do that. So, he gave them power. Mark, Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. The Bible said he caused the disciples together and he gave them power. Over demonic realm is the least power. The least power is actually over demonic realm. Well, that's why in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, the Bible, if you read down, if you read down, he said, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out demons. When you give your heart to Christ, you have access to his name. And in that access to his name, you have power over demonic realms. Over the power of darkness. In my name they shall cast out demons. They will take up 
They will take up any daily thing and it shall not up them. I heard the story of John G. Lake when he was a missionary in South Africa. You know what that man did? There was a particular, there was a particular virus that was killing people. That when that virus come upon you, foam will come out from the mouth of the person and the foam that come out from the mouth of the person contains that virus. If that foam dare touch another person, the person also will die. You know the good news? He said they should carry, they should carry the form and the test and they could see the they could see through their machine that these things are still there he said put it on my hand he said you will die he said put it when they put it on the hand of the man of god called john g lake the virus died those are the men you are talking about can somebody who's appointed to die shake you and because that person met you the person is appointed to live and this does not make you a pastor this does not make you in any way a preacher. This only make you a Christian. In my name, they shall cast out all. Some people are right there 14 years. They are sick. Only one pain and then you have contact with them and say that pain gone. And they have been under the idea for 14 years. Only just one command. And then the, that, only that one command and the person will come here. How come if the person carries that kind of a dimension of the power, will he be under that nonsense for 14 years? This is what we do to ourselves. When we remain powerless. You see, it's not a function of age. It's a function of trust. It's a function of the understanding and the revelation of the finished work of the Christ. It's not a function of age. Yeah, we are lifting our hands to you. Yeah, we are giving you terms for all you do. As we praise and worship your holy name, you are here dwelling within our prayer. That's the first realm of power. You have power over demonic realms. You have power to cast out demons. Strangers shall hear your voice and they shall run out of their eating place. There's a dimension of the fire of God at work in you that at your appearance. You are not ordinary, my friend. The devil has bastardized you and reduced you to powder so that when you appear, you can only explain grammar. You know how to shape your hair one kind and then one small witch will slap you and then you are just say, You are more than this. The people that command the power actually legislate authority in every generation. You know why your house is full of idiots, vagabonds, and your friends are people of low level? You know why? You lack the power of God. There are friends I have that if I say, this people is my friend, some of you will not allow me to sleep again. Because most of the things you are looking for are on your table. There are people who look for me 11 p.m. in the night. That they don't like coming during the day. They pack their escort somewhere and they, they trek. You won't know they are the one. You know what you lose your life for? You remain a beggar of situation where well, you can bring the power of God to a situation. And this is the least realm. The realm where you can cast out demons is the least realm. Number two, words of power. You have a lot to do. If somebody get them blessed. Right, number two, in case you are not getting blessed, I understand. Ignorance is part of the system. Amen. Number two is a power over nature. Power over what? That's the second way of power. Do you know that creation is actually designed? Who can help me and read? Romans 8 and verse 19. Do you know creation is actually designed to work together for the good of man? Creation. Elements of the heart are actually designed to what? This is why when you have power over nature, nobody can gather one gather one nonsense somewhere and put an incantation on it and say let the thing come and affect you and the thing will affect you why you have power over what over nature do you know there are men and women who causes the sun just to bring a dimension of a spell over a people there are i said in the sermon before in this allergy there's a particular woman anytime rain is falling she will wear a particular black cloth written in some few things and put something to cover her, her head and she will bring out a particular cutlass and chanting some few things while the rain is falling this is actually one of the demonic realm that i don't want to go into that go into that concept but this woman was so afraid this woman was so everybody in that community is afraid of this woman no child in the house nobody in that house 
She, she only stays alone and she's going elderly. But when rain is falling, she wear a black cloth, some seven, this allergy, close to, I can give you the address. Go still find the woman close to this bola side where you're going to Dawaki, where you have the juicy by the ground along Dawaki. The woman there. Find that what I'm talking about. The woman will wear this cloth anytime rain falls, she will come out. And then raise that cutlass and begin to speak some nonsense. Speak some nonsense. Everybody in that community, you don't dare near go the house of that woman. You know something? I had a case with one particular woman who thought I was advising the husband not to marry her. And then they already have like three or four children together and they were fighting. So this woman will come to the church, insult me and shout on me. Did all man, I won't reply. So one day there's in their compound where they are, they used to have one particular a particular kind of moringa tree in their compound. So the woman came to actually plug the moringa tree. So plug the moringa the rest of that. So this woman woke up to to this particular witch and he told the woman and he said, You see this pastor? This is what this pastor is doing. This is what this pastor is doing. So they were standing and they were talking. And I remember one of my friends who was a doctor was passing. So they were talking and they were speaking a particular kind of language and the rest of that. Ah! And the woman looked. The woman that is a witch that everybody fear. And the woman looked. He looked at me. I was right inside. I think I was eating bolly or something. I was enjoying myself eating bolly and granite. So because doctor just left me. So the doctor left me and was passing. He met the two of them talking. He said, ah. he said, what did you do to these people? I said, what is the problem? He said, they just told me now that if not that God answers your prayer, we will have killed you. I said, tell them I will kill them. And I didn't stop there. I increased gear. So the woman, the woman says, banana. So I, I, I called the woman. I said, how much is the whole banana? She said, this is how much. I brought her the money. I said, oh, the change. And I began to eat. I said, would you eat? She dare not eat. In case you're that's what I'm talking about, I just gave you the address. Go and verify what I said. Your power over nature in that realm where your creation is designed to work together for your good. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 19, the Bible says, It said, the NS. The earnest expectation of the creation awaited for the manifestations of the what? Of the sons of what? Of God. Earnest expectation of the creation. So, they are waiting for the sons of God to come and give them authority. The sons of God who are going to maturity can actually take creation. Stop here. What do you think Joshua will engage? When Joshua said, sons, stay here. Commanding nature. What do you think Elijah in James chapter 5, in summary, read from verse 16, 17, 18. When he said Elijah was a man of a like passion, he said, he said, rain cease. For three and a half years, there was no rain. And after three and a half years, he said, rain come. And rain come. What do you think Elijah knows? Power over nature. You know why? When people gather nature to be able to attack you, when you have authority over nature, you can dismantle it. You know, And this is why when many of you attack, they call you from the village and they put a pot and they put one light and you was born in right inside. And they say, you will be sick. Because you have authority over nature, we can say that thing will not stand and it will not. There is power over nature. And every child of God can be baptized into that realm. When you come into the reality, you can actually cancel nature for your sake. It doesn't matter what they gather together. It doesn't matter the nonsense they put together. You can, you can dismantle it. The Bible says, we see that said the thing that come to pass. When the Lord, what? Commanded it not. You see, there is a realm of command that you can actually speak over nature. If it is not the voice of God, they will not hear. That's why the Bible says, oh heart, oh heart, hear ye the word of the Lord. Oh heart, oh heart, hear ye. They, they can speak to the heart against you. I remember a particular person who said, I caused the water for your sake. I caused the ground for your sake. I caused the air for your sake. That If you are not breathing this year, that's when the cause will not reach you. If you are not actually on this ground, this, they can cause the earth, cause the ground, cause the water. If you would not dare use water, that's when the cause will not come. But it doesn't matter who said. The Bible said, we see that said the thing that coming to pass. When the Lord, because you have power and authority over nature. It doesn't matter the nature, the cost against you. You can put them under check. Can I pray for someone here? Elasi vrondi amanta. Elako brondi amako ruski brondi ate karazuzi ate. Eluski brondi lamande keru uakai ruski hinta. Every nature they've actually invoke against your life and destiny by the authority in the name of Jesus and render them useless now in the name of Jesus Christ. If that sounds like it, let your amen be loud. What do you think Jesus invoke when he turned water to wine? He said, take the water, take it to the first, take the cup and give it to the governor of the day. And what will happen? He said, it will become wine. 
That's power all over nature. We can call water and wine, and it will be wine. What do you think we engage? When we come, when we actually have communion service, and you buy ordinary bread, ordinary bread, ordinary bread from a shop, and you buy ordinary wine from a shop, and then you bring it here and we say, in the name of Jesus, it's not the blood and the flesh of Christ. And then you partake of that, and then you begin to communicate wonders. Why? Power over nature. You can declare something to be and it will be. Why? Creation, nature is designed to work for your good. And this realm is only for sons. It's only for sons. Those who have actually grown, not those who are still playing church. Not those who are still easily offended when they are rebuked. Not those who are easily offended when they are corrected. It's for sons, those who have actually grown into maturity. There are three things that guarantee that you're a son. Number one is ability to hear God and obey. Ability to what? Hear God and obey. You can operate in the power to actually command nature if you have not been able to hear God and obey God. Ability to hear God and obey him qualifies you to be what? To be a son. Number two, you must be transformed if you must be called a son. You must be transformed. You must be transformed by the word. You must be transformed by the word. You see, I said this here before and I'm not sorry again to say it. There are people you can fight. There are people God just have to help your destiny to pass through them. That you are hungry at them. The Bible says if they come against you, they will fall. And then when you go against them, they will be granted as powder. You didn't read that in your Bible? Asi karata. I was teaching one of my dear lady on Wednesday. I said they are, they are fathers over realms. That if God will help you, you make them in that realm, you just have to honor them and leave. We sow into our pastor not because your money is important. We sow because it's in a realm and he can upgrade it to that realm. Yeah. Yeah. I pray you will not understand this one. <laughs> yeah. Alright, number three, because of time. Alright, we can come under the government of the Holy Spirit, make you a son of God. Ability to hear God and obey God, make you a son. Ability to be transformed by the word and the prayers, make you a son. And ability to put yourself under the government of the Spirit, make you a what? A son. Let me tell you the, the third realm of power. Number three, is the knowledge of the Son of God. The knowledge of who? Not everybody have the revelation of the Christ. In this realm, Let me say this if all that we are if all the power that we have is about doing it's not about being like this is not about becoming we are weak can i say that again if all the power you do is just to do is just to do it's not about transforming to make you become something you are weak He said, as we behold him, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. He said, as we behold him in a glass, we are all transformed in the same image. It is called the mystery of imaging. Where you can be able to image Christ. This is one of the strange level and the wires of power that the believer needs to walk in. Where you can be able to bring God to a situation you're already looking like him. We are all transformed into the same image. The question is you that you're opening your breast and opening your bum to actually do a version in the name of one nonsense because you watch one thing. The thing is what are you transformed to be? Are you trying to, is that an image of Christ? And you want to manifest the power of God? No sir, it doesn't work that way. He said no, it's because today is Christmas. That's why half of my breast should be open. No sir, that's not imaging Christ. That's imaging corruption. And this is why the power of God cannot flow through you. Because you are not becoming like him. I wish there is time. I need to rush now. Number four. I'll stop here. There are seven. But let me stop at number four. It's the, realm of, it's the power of hunger. Which is the realm of hunger. Let me put it that way. You can put it as wells of hunger. There's something called the wells of hunger. The Bible said it that do tests. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. He said that do test and hunger after righteousness. The Bible said they shall be filled. It is called the staying power. It is called the what? The staying power. I love what the Apostle Aaron called this. He said it's called, it's called the staying power. Ability to endure against all distractions. Now you see, we need this realm of power in our days. Many of us just pray one day and we are tired. Many of us, the last time we pray is doing the prayer and fasting. Many of us, we are actually already conflicting God because laxity is coming. If you start well and you are not growing well, something happened. You lack the staying power. Your hunger begins to die. In 
Psalm 42 and verse 1. Yes, I'm correct. Can, I check? Can, you, can somebody read that scripture to me? Psalm 42 in verse 1. It is called the staying power. Ability that your own God is sustained. Did you see that this is superior? Ability that your own God is sustained is superior to the level where you are casting out demons. Those are ordinary realms. The Bible even talk in Luke chapter 10. If you read that verse 17 to 21. The Bible make it clear, point blank. When they told Jesus that demons were subject to rust in your name. You know what Jesus told them? Jesus told them, he said, I thank God. He said, Father, thank you for all these things I revealed to babes. So, that realm is for babes. You don't believe me? Realm of casting out demons is for babies. Like what our children in the church, the partners should be doing. When they say, they must say, get out. That's what an unknown year share is supposed to be doing. Oh, they brought a dead fellow to church. He said, don't worry, don't disturb pastor. He's busy. All these ones are small things. Get out, my friend. And the person stand up. He said, pastor, you don't know what you're saying to raise the dead. That's the authority God has given to you. It doesn't make you a preacher. I've seen people, the only thing, they, one young man was working with us one time. So I had a dealing in the night after enjoying myself in the night. And then I came into church. And as I came into church, I saw the young man. I remember the brown suit. So I removed my brown suit. And I said, the young man, come. And he came. I said, wear the suit. And he wore the suit. He shook. So he was leaving the church that day on his way to the house. On his way to his house. He asked some fellow who knows him. And then the fellow who knows him greeted him. He said, and he asked for their daughter. They said, the daughter is sick. So he went there. He said, in the name of Jesus. And then the person became healed. He came back to me next Sunday. He said, God, call me. Lakoski, Bronte, Abaki. What if I not give you the suit? You only want you only wore it's only the suit you wore only the suit he said God has called him I said young man I break you from a bread shop you are only a seller of bread we evangelize to the church and I give you opportunity to be leading prayer I'm not saying we don't have a level of authority but you know what the staying power is the high it's one of the realm that realm is for primary school where you can cast out demons is for primary school. Don't forget that the disciples that went about casting out demons that time, they never received the Holy Ghost. That means they have not built stature in the realm of the spirit. Yes, that thing is actually an environmental anointing that came upon them because they believe in the Christ and they follow Christ and he gave it to them. Power can be wielded. They say, go out and go and do this. And when the person comes back, he says, me, no, sir. No, sir. It is called the believer authority, which is called the power of delegation. It can come from the realm of the monarch of Zion and say, you delegate, I send you right there. And then you go and command the result. Are we together? <laughs> Is yeah. somebody what blessed this morning? Can I move further now? The staying power is a pile of hunger. When your fasting begins to die, when your prayer's life begins to die, something begins to die in you. It is the staying power, which is the realm of, it's a well of hunger. They that do hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. This is what the scripture said. I read the scripture, Psalm 42 and verse 1. Who is there? You read if you're a Christian. Read loud if you're a soldier. Who is there? Psalm 42 and verse 1. He said, as the deer panted after the water blew, so my heart panted. Who is there? So, so my heart panted after you. Who is there? Psalm, 40, Psalm 42 and verse 1. Okay, he's on the screen. Alright. He said, as the heart panted after what? So my heart do what? Pan that my heart panted and Thirsty to remain consistent following you. Can you go to Psalm 63 and verse 1 and 2? Can we read something here? You see, one of the realm of power is the realm of hunger. Those elders who are actually in heaven, those angels are never tired. In this realm, you are never satisfied. Not that you heal a headache and then you begin to proud. I've seen people, just one headache is what they heal and that's the only testimony around their ministry and they camp right there. No, that's not the realm. That's not the realm. That's not the real. I was sharing with some few persons some days ago. They are here. Of our one of, of our one of us was in this church before. The child was appointed to die. We carried this child to the hospital. A few persons who could bear me witness here. I did not. I was not driving that time, so I borrowed the car of one of us who took us to the hospital. They already went from hospital to hospital. There was no blood anymore. In one of the big hospitals around, they discharge them to take them to the National Hospital. And when they discharge you from one of the good hospitals in this city to go to the National Hospital, I know the case is critical. The case is already 50-50, if not 70-30. One of the brothers that was with us said, I remember that my father died. That the house was already, in this eye, there was no, 
There was no apple anymore. You know this apple that you are using to see was not there. The apple has gone up, meaning life is gone. The mouth was already open and saliva was already pouring out. Meaning the mouth cannot be controlled anymore. Life is gone. And then the tummy was big and the person was and this young and this young boy was pooping black, blackish, blackish poopoo. When your poopoo has already changed to blackish poopoo, it means death has come. At one day him, I took the car. I didn't allow him to drive, so I drove the car. We were rushing to National Hospital. So when they got admitted and the rest of that, after they got settled, I know the baby was dead, but I will not pronounce him dead. I know. So I carried the boy. I put the boy close to me. And I said some few things. And I had God said, I give you this. So I carried the baby. I give it to I carried the young boy. I give it to the mother. And I told the brother that was with us, he's here. I said, You will not die. You know what the brother said? He did his head like this. That means it's not possible. <laughs> I laughed. And four days later, it was Sunday. So I, I, I took a few persons from church. I said, you're following to the National Hospital. We borrowed the same car. I wasn't driving then. We borrowed, we borrowed the same car. So we drove there. And when we got to the place, we saw the, we saw the, we saw the baby. We saw the young boy play. And I asked him, is he dead now? That boy is still alive to you now. Yeah. You still alive to you now. You know what? Well, you can... Calm down. That's not... That's... Calm down. Now, you see... Ability to sustain your hunger to a level where you can have a staying power with God supersede all these realms. Is somebody following me here? When your fasting life begin to die, the realm of power begin to die. When your service life begin to die, you see, I used to come to church 7 a.m. before. Now I come 8 30 and I don't feel anything. The staying power dies. It's a destiny, it's a journey to repeat destiny. You don't know in the realm of the spirit. You have been demoted to class one. And if you cannot even make the class one, you are demoted. Which is the power to cast out unclean spirit. Staying power. Consistency of followership with the Christ. As the deer panted after the water, so my heart panted after you. Can we look at that scripture, Psalm 63 and verse 1? Are we there now? Psalm 63 and verse 1. He said, Oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and a testy land. Where you know what? Where you know what I is. Move to the next verse, verse 2. He said, To seek thy what? Thy power and thy what? As I have seen in where? In the sanctuary. People who can command the staying power, who can wake up early and be able to authorize the day. These are legislative who can actually bring the government. Government. You know why you're, you know why you will not be a waste? There's a prayer and there's a prophecy over you. And this is why you should not go down because of the distraction of the day. All that is happening right now, you can put them on that check by dimension of a man of power cannot be broke. A man of power can never go hungry. The reason why I look as if you are hungry and you are manipulating around is because what you are carrying is power that not power. That family that the child came back to life one day look at me and they brought a live goat to me that goat was so big that i've never seen that kind of goat before in my life i carried that goat i could not eat i carried it to a senior pastor it was too big. if i keep this thing and put it in my fridge and if i start distributing them i say pastor is doing something so let me give it to somebody that understand there are gifts i've seen that i've rejected not because they are bad they are too big for me at my level i'm not greedy i'm not covetous and that's why there are things i don't take I don't want anything to contaminate my hunger. Whatever would take it. I sold a land for some people. I connected them and then they sold that land and they brought some money to me. And when they brought the money to me, I said, no, you share it. They said, you don't need money. I said, I need. He said, take. I said, no, if I keep taking this kind of money to take a Bible from my hand. Hunger. Can you hunger to the level where you will not compromise? That the money that comes to you must be holy and pure. Must be a result of faith. The staying power. If all that you are living for in your life is just to do anything just to get money, can I tell you something? You will be a slave in the corridor of greatness. You will be a slave. There are many people who are big, who are billionaires today, who carry the bag of fellow billionaires. You know why? They are not master of the realm. They are slave of the realm. There are pastors and there are pastors. 
Somebody who catch me one day and was looking for scripture. Was carrying Bible up and down. I was in the hospital some two days ago. And then in that hospital, one man of God came in and then was looking for scripture to go and preach. And I was already talking with some fellows. I could, people could bear me with them. He said, I've been looking for this scripture for long. And then my phone is not here now. I could have got good the scripture heart. I shook it for him. I told him, sit down. He sat down. I said, let's start from this to this. And he began to read. Before he read the seven verses I quoted, he saw everything he's looking for. He said, yes, yes, very correct. And he's going to preach. There are pastors and there are pastors. You can be great and you remain a slave in the corridor of greatness when you don't understand the staying power. And don't understand. There are singers that are singers. But there are singers who carry others people, other singers bag. Why? Because they are slaves in that corridor. Because there is no hunger that sustains the reality of what they are looking for. If all that you are looking for is just money and then be a graduation, you will be a slave. Because there are people who will be rich and yet will be powerful because you need the power you carry their bag. Can I close? The power of God is coming upon you now. Yeah. You can change things. Power is dynamic ability to cause changes. You can be so empowered by God to effect a change. Say thank you, Jesus. Is somebody blessed this morning? Say thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, can I close now? All right, let's celebrate our mothers. Amen. Let, uh, thank you for clapping. Glory to God. And all the ladies clap for yourself. All the ladies to clap for yourself. Because you are going to become women. You are going to become mothers someday. Go to clap for yourself also. Please clap. I thought you would rejoice. Are you not proud of yourself? Are you saying God should turn you to a grass? Are you saying God should turn you to stone? Would you clap and be joyful in the house of the Lord if you mud? Glory to God. All right. All right. Let me tell you three things. That will help you as a mother because we are celebrating our mother. So we are going to, I'm going to be praying a short prayer, and after praying those prayers, and then we are going to have our mothers sing, and then they will, they will come up and dance, and then after they dance, we will allow one of them pray for us as a church, and then we will now pray for them. Is that correct? All right. So that is to appreciate them celebrating our women and international mothers. If you're a mother, be proud of yourself. Even if you're pregnant, be proud of yourself. Can I say amen to that? You've contributed to the agenda and to the will of God. In case you don't believe me, let me show you. Job 42 and verse 15. Job 42. If you can help me, studio, at least we have one screen that is working. That is to tell you all screens are working. It's just what we split to the rest that is not there. Job 42 and verse 15. Me la ha te kari. I think I should give somebody my shoe. Amen. <laughs> no, I will not. Amen. Oh dear, oh dear. Some years ago, I was packing from Ibadan. And I wanted to come to Abuja. So there's a pastor close to me who used to go to preach in one of the neighboring community. So I don't know, I wasn't married then, so they used to call me daddy. So I was wondering, what's the problem? I'm, I'm not. So some people call me bishop. I say, who gave you that one? You see, people call me bishop. I don't know why, what they see. I've never addressed myself as one. So when I was going, it is in my, it is in my nature that anywhere I'm living, I don't go with my load. Mm -mm, I don't. I only go with my books and few of my clothes. So my TV and not everything I had. I was staying in a four-bedroom apartment then in the bathroom. So everything I had in that apartment, I gave it out. I didn't sell one. I was coming to, I was coming, I was locating to Abuja. So I saw it as waste. Can, you know, some of you want to locate from one place to one place. You go and carry it. You know why you are not blessed? You've tied your destiny to many other things. All of the things I gave out, those days, I'm better than all of them today. Including my ceiling fan. So I didn't carry any, including my bed. And when I came in here, one woman could not sleep. Went to buy me a new, brand new mocha bed. I've given that mocha bed out. I'm not using it again. I've even passed that So, when I was living, when I was coming to Abuja, so I look at a few of my things. So, I look at who can. So, I have one shoe that one, one Igbo chief gave me. You see me, do I don't want to start mentioning the name of that Igbo chief. So, he gave me one. The shoe is very long, very big, very expensive. So, anytime I wear the shoe, this thing used to do me some. This is too expensive. I kept it. And I have some suits. So, I called that guy. I said, How many suits do you have? Ah, he said, No, daddy, I don't have any suit. Too. It's only that cafeteria I used to wear. I said, don't worry, you have suits now. So I took him to my room. I said, carry this suit and carry these shoes and all of that. So the, the pastor carried Because I don't relocate on time, because of few things I was waiting for, I already gave out a few things, my TV, my everything. My... 
It was only just one rug I was using to sleep and then the ceiling fan. So I already told them that, don't worry, when I'm leaving, you can come and carry the ceiling fan and the, the bread that I made, you can come and carry it, don't worry. So when I gave that guy, he was invited in a night vigil. So he went for the night vigil. He wore the suit and he wore the, the shoe. He implicated himself. So when he got to the place, I'm not preaching persons, I'm only telling you the arrangements. You need to sustain your hunger for God. That's the number four realm of power. Not casting out demons. Ability to shut down distraction doesn't want this to happen. It's called the staying power. And I'm telling you what happened more than 10 years ago. And it has been on the increase now. You know when you genuinely have the power of God, you won't be proud. You look like a fool that anybody can manage. Yeah. <laughs> One, one young man did something was saying some few things. I was in my office, I was hearing him in life. Far batting. There are people who knows me here that when you talk in your house, I tell them what they say. I've done it before, like twice or three years. So the realm you are still fighting. Are we together? You'll be so you'll be easy to be abused. That's why Jesus can easily be maligned. If you genuinely look at the power of God, you look like a nobody. But in the day of manifestation. They know they are far. They know they are far. So the young man wore the shoe and the suit and then went for the meeting. Only for him to open his mouth, everywhere scattered. Ah, he said, I didn't pray for the last many days. What's happening here? He did some few things, some man happened, the place scattered and then he came back. He didn't allow me to sleep. Came, rushed down from the other night, he said, say, what happened? I said, what really happened? I was embarrassed. He said, I said, what happened? He said, this happened, this happened. He said, I said, oh, glory to God. God is walking through you. He said, that's not it. He said, I know. I know. I know where I got these things from. I wore that suit you gave me. I went with that shoe. Can you be so valuable enough that if, if people don't like you, they can't despise you. Why? Because you carry a value. This is the essence of the power of God. It doesn't matter who hates you. If that value is there, they will look for you. They don't like your face, but they will, they will be compared. They will be compared. Can you celebrate our women? Job 42 verse 15. Thank you. Job 42 verse 15.